The Gina and Maddie podcast. Last week I was talking about us packing up the fam and we went up to Coffs Harbour for the long yeah, weekend. I can't wait to hear all about it. Was it was really good. Like it was, it, we had the best time. So it was Bella's birthday on Sunday. We Did got you a little, spoil her? Oh, absolutely not. Um, oh. <laughs> we were away. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, sh- you know what we did. We um, and because you're in a different area, and the car was so packed. Like we're you trying couldn't to... squeeze a little present in. You know what's small? A ring. Uh, yeah, she's got one of those. Uh, Two of them actually. Earrings. Uh, oh, doesn't really wear them. No, you know, the the, <laughs> uh, the the trip away was sort of the the gift. That yeah, you know, fair like, enough. Uh, we sort of just said let's not do. She said it too. Let's not do a present. Let's just say somewhere nice. And we got this beautiful Airbnb. Had a pool. We don't have a pool at home, and the kids are just. Love. Frothing on it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we need a pool because they just got on like a house Pools on fire. Pools are the best. Yeah. They're good babysitters too. Where's the kids oh, out? You yeah, have to, you have to watch them. You have to be out there. Oh, do you? Yes. Can't just sit back and crack a Bundy and cola? No. no. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. no, you it, should get one. Even just there. get a little blow-up pool. No, nah, not the same. They fight in that. Uh, oh. We tried. Trust me. We tried. <laughs> uh, and uh, we did all the normal stuff. But on Sunday for Bella's birthday, she got we did sleep in and then we went to the local Woolies in the morning and bought like a little cake and Aww. some balloons and blew them up and ran in and woke her up and that sort of stuff. Oh, I love that. I love, love it. Um, uh, on Saturday, we went to the Big Banana. Oh, gosh. And basically, I'm recreating the holidays that my folks did yeah. for me. Like, we drive up the coast. My yeah. sister lived in Belgium, which is inland from uh, Coffs, uh, for quite a bit. So, we used to go up and stay on the farm up there and went to the Big Banana. And, gosh. Hasn't that place changed? Has it changed? Oh man, it's like a it's like an amusement park. Really? Like these days. So you've got the big banana. Did the photo out the front, the stock standard yeah. uh, one for the socials, um, and then <laughs> did like the plantation tour. Oh god, kids found that riveting. So we did that, and then we went uh, into the water park, the water slides. There's a water park at the big banana. Yeah. So it's like, and it has like uh, six different slides. Are you kidding? Uh, ones that you can just do on the mat, like a little yeah. mat that you slide down, and there's other raft ones, which I cool. Love water slides. I, I convinced. I feel terrible, but I convinced my son, the seven-year-old, to do what was like I think it was called the Annihilator, which is like the <gasps> super straight steep, down, straight down one. Psh, and he did it and smacked his head into the side of the slide at the end. Like oh, he did it, and there's no. a bang, and there's like oh, and there's a few tears. But then he got pulled himself together, and he's like. I'm going to do it again and not hurt myself. And I was like, that is that is the spirit, mate. And he oh. got up there and he, he hurt his back on the second time. But it's like, okay, that wasn't my fault. Like, <laughs> just like you wanted to do it the second time. I forced oh you the God. first time. And the second time was on you, mate. <laughs> is he okay? He's all right. Look, they all, everyone was getting off them with like red backs because of the like the, the, gro- the grooves where they join yeah. the slides together. It's like, yeah. dr- 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 all the way down. Anyway. Did you do the scary one as well? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. After I saw his back, I was like, that's on you, mate. Uh, and then there was laser tag. So we're in the... We're in the facility lining up for that one. They're like, there wasn't too many people, but then a whole group came. And like, oh, great. Some teenage boys came. They're going to be, well, I thought they were going to be rat bags, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then um, what could only be described as uh, four mature women came with a couple of teenagers and uh, they just, the mature women, uh, uh, they pushed to the front of the line uh, mm. and brought their kids in. And then, uh, well, like, Bella, Bella knows what I'm like with Q jumpers. I get a bit funny about it. She's like, it's okay. Maybe, maybe family they, holiday. Maybe they paid a twenty dollars to jump. <laughs> maybe, maybe they did. Maybe. And it's like, don't worry about it. I was like, no, that's okay. Yeah. I was like, oh no, I did the little. Oh, didn't realize the line started there. She's like, don't. Do you Just say don't. that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and she's like, no, 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 no. I was like, no, it's fine. We're okay. <gasps> So we get in there. They were on the opposite team. To, so Stevie and I went. Uh, the old ladies. We, yeah, they were on the blue. We were the green, right? And uh, I said, Stevie, you come with me. And Ziggy, you come with me. And Bella and uh, uh, Billy went on the green. And we sat at the blue. And these old birds, right, they just kept following the five-year-old around and just no. shooting her. Bing, bing. Waiting for her thing to recharge again. And then bing. And I was like, <gasps> oh. No way. Right. I was amazing at GoldenEye on Nintendo 64. <laughs> you have picked the wrong person to shoot their daughter, right? So <gasps> I was then on. Then I was just scouting them out the entire time. I was just like, you, come on, where are you, Deirdre? Where are you? <laughs> My God! And then I was just like, yes. And then I told a couple of teenage boys who were on our team, I said, see these old birds? They're picking on a five-year-old. And they're like, right. So I formed this gang and we just, I had a gang of teenage boys, me, the five-year-old, just chasing around Deirdre and her friends with a purple rinse. Karen, just going, pew, 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 Karen pew. and Carol. Oh, and we just obliterated them, smashed them. And I came out and Bill goes, are you celebrating about like beating women in laser tag? I was like, absolutely I am. Gina and Maddie. On the weekend. 
A grand final took place. The Panthers were triumphant and, well, we, we kind of already knew the result. We knew. What was going to happen. We didn't really even need to watch it because we had Bobby, the psychic sausage dog, in the studio. All right, thanks, Gina and Maddie. We are live in the kitchen here at Star 104.5G. Mm. The time has come. There's almost as much anticipation about this event I as there is there the is. grand final. I'm actually feeling a little bit nervous. Yeah. Uh, I can feel the tension from Bobby because he feels the pressure to be 100% exactly again. Bobby, how are you feeling? You ready? You ready to do it? Tell us who's going to win this Sunday. <laughs> All right, this is this is it. Bobby, the psychic sausage dog, with a 100% strike rate so far of predicting sports winners. Let's find out who is going to win on Sunday. Will it be the Panthers? Will it be the Storm? It's over to you, Bobby. Free. Straight to the Penrith Panthers. <laughs> we have got a four-peat on the cards. You've seen it here first. Un- Unbelievable! We're back live now. Unbelievable scenes here at Star One. Incredible! So he picked. He's that's that's his three out of three. Yeah, now, he got the right? Super Bowl. He got Origin, and now he's picked uh, the Grand Final. Uh, you can check out the footage of Bobby <laughs> just being so precise he, with his he decision. He went straight to it. He didn't even hesitate at all. So he knows his yeah. stuff. All the all the video is up on the socials at Jenna and Maddie, <laughs> and on the Facebook page as well. Well, one of the most famous animals. I mean, Bobby is becoming very famous, but one of the most famous animals known for picking winning teams in sports is Paul the Octopus. Do you remember Paul the Octopus? the World Cup? Yeah, Mm. he gained worldwide fame during the 2010 FIFA World Cup. He correctly predicted the outcomes of several matches, not just one, including the final. He'd choose between two boxes, similar to how Bobby the Psychic Sausage does it, two boxes of food. He would choose which one, the octopus. Then there was also Babe the Pig, who made predictions during the 2010 and 2011 NBA season. Not as famous as Paul. And Tippin' the Frog. Do you remember Tippin' the Frog? No idea who Tippin' the Frog is. <laughs> he was a frog who made predictions for Aussie Rules football right. finals and he would just jump towards the team yep. and he was he was pretty accurate too. How many did he get? Oh, it doesn't say oh, here okay. in my piece of paper. <laughs> but he was pretty accurate. He was pretty accurate. He's, he's, he's less famous than Paul, yeah. less famous than Babe the Pig. Yeah. And Fido the Cat, also in 2019, AFL Grand Final, picked that. But our Bobby... The Central Coast Zone Bobby, mm. I think, is a future superstar. And we wonder what's next for him. I mean, what, what will go on? He's already got a manager. He's, he has. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's, he's his dadager, Steve. <laughs> Takes him very seriously. He'll have to get an agent next, and I think his Instagram's exploding. As we speak, what is? Do we know what uh, Bobby's Instagram is so we can get people to follow? Oh, we're going to see Jason look it up, it up for us yeah. now. And and you know, I'm just wondering, what do you do? Well, like when you've got an animal like that, what do you do with a talent like that? Because you don't realise when you get him as a puppy, he's going to have all of his talent. So I thought we'd get him in in the studio. Uh, Bobby's here now, so I wanted to ask Bobby a couple of questions. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Here he is. I hope you don't mind, Maddie, if I take if I take these questions. With no, it's Bobby. fine. Yeah, I, I don't really talk dogs. So, no, that's so, fine. You can I'm, take I'm this so, one. so Bobby, did you feel <laughs> did did you feel confident heading into Sunday night's grand final? You were pretty definite in your pick here in the studio on Friday. Rush, rush! I definitely knew who was going to win. <laughs> I saw photos of you uh, on your socials, uh, like sleeping, watching the game. Were you tired from just choosing the winner? I, I already knew the result. <laughs> Have you got an agent? Everyone's wondering if you've got an agent yet. Max Markson. <laughs> He's the biggest one in Australia. Well done. Takes about 40%, but that's okay. 40% of what? Everything. <laughs> Schmackos. Do you think you'll stay living on the Central Coast no. or you need to move <laughs> to the big smoke? I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to move to Bondi. I'm going to be on Made in Bondi. Oh, that's a good idea. Max has got me on. It's got me. Max has got me on the show. I'm just going to be walking along the beach. I might do a poo. <laughs> now, well, now we're on the beach. Both. <laughs> do you th- are you going to ask for a pay rise? Like, just, I think you should. Yes. I've got 14 schmackos every time. <laughs> and now the biggest question of all is, do you get a gut feeling or, or, or something mysterious leads you to the right dog bowl? So, sorry, I was just looking out the window. What did you say? <laughs> I saw a bird. And that's Bobby. Gina and Maddie. So manifestation is a bit of a buzzword now, and I know lots of people are super curious about it, including producer CJ. She said to me a few, oh, last week, do you reckon you could explain what manifestation is? So I teach this when I'm mentoring artists because mm-hmm. often it's the missing piece. They might be super talented, have great songs, and it's just not all coming together. And this is the bit, and I mean, it's a bit woo-woo, but it's 
it's true. I, I really believe in it. I know you're a bit. Mm, you're that's a right. Bit you sus. go. Let me try and convince <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. me try and convince you. I don't think my th- my thing with it is I don't think if I sit at home and I imagine a Maserati in my driveway, that a Maserati is going to turn up in my driveway. That's not how you do it. That's okay, why. Go, go, it go, definitely go. Show won't. me how a Maserati is going to turn up in my driveway. <laughs> Take, show me the way. Well, first of all, for a Maserati in particular, you'd have to go and sit in it and smell the leather mm-hmm. and feel what it feels like to be that successful. So it's not – manifesting isn't asking, it's becoming. So you have to start – Imagining yourself. Okay, like a transformer. (laughs) Imagining yourself successful enough to be driving the Maserati and asking yourself why. But Mm -hmm. here's the seven steps. First of all, visual visual there's seven. Visualize what you want. Mm -hmm. So and you have to make what I think is a good idea is to make a vision board where you put, you know, all kinds of things that you would love. Like you might put your Maserati if that's what you want. You might put your dream house, you might put holidays, money, or whatever things that is that you want to have. And you'd be very specific with the universe. Very tell them exact or ask for exactly what you want. I explain it like if you went into a hairdresser with long hair like me and CJ and just said, give me a haircut, the hairdresser can't possibly know what hairstyle you want. So you have to be very specific. You have to take in a photo of Jennifer Aniston and say, can I have the Rachel? That Yes, yeah, you'd yeah. be very specific. Okay, Are yeah. you? And when you ask what you get, you get what you ask for. Mm-hmm. Desire, be intensely excited about what you're visualising. So that's the butterflies in your tummy. You need to feel, when you're thinking about what it is that you want, you need to feel the butterflies in your tummy and feel it excited. You need to believe what you desire is possible to manifest and see the universe, if you, if we're talking universe, here's the loudest feeling. So if you think, oh, I would love a Maserati or I would love a new car. Mm-hmm. Maserati might be a little oh, loud. So the universe can't get me a Maserati. Maybe... It can if you probably need to start working in okay. Sydney. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but you've got to just really like trust and believe that it'll be and the universe hears doubt. So if you go, I'd love a Maserati but I probably won't get one, you won't. But if you go, I'd love a brand new car and I know it's coming, you're more likely to get it. But but the universe f- hears doubt loud because doubt is a really sort of strong feeling. Mm-hmm. You're looking at me with a lot of doubt in your eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance, expect it. Expect what you – you expect it's coming and just believe it's coming. Intend. You've got to want and intend a different. You must have the intention to manifest your desire. So that's including positive self-talk. You would say things like, I am successful. I am such and such a weight if you want to lose weight. I have – you talk in the present tense. Okay. You know, I have my dream house. I have my dream car. I have my dream partner. Or that you're talking like as if it's happened. And then that goes back to the butterflies in your belly. Feel like your dream has come true. Feel what it would feel like to be sitting in that car okay. that you want. Yep. Um, action. You act and behave like you've got it. And you, of course, have to work hard. You can't just sit, in, sit oh. at your house oh. and go... <laughs> so you you're telling me I have to go get a job, yes. earn good money, yes. be able to afford a Maserati to then manifest one. You might win one, maybe. Okay. Might yeah, win yeah. one. Okay. And allow this is the hardest bit with manifestation is to detach. So you you make your vision board and you dream it and you figure out all these things that you really, really want in your life, but then you kind of have to detach from it. You can't hold so tight, like, oh I want this really bad. You've just got to kind of let it go and know that it's gonna come to you. So don't forget, manifesting isn't asking, it's becoming. I've got butterflies in my tummy right now. <laughs> and you're I'm, hungry. I'm a bit of gas, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> the Gina and Maddie Podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.